Richard, the beginning of the universe is that perennial question that human beings have asked from time immemorial, and in our own lives, we all we all ask. And cosmology today seems to be centering around the Big Bang as a real beginning. But then the question: What happened before then? And everybody has no answer. Tells you to shut up because there is no answer. <laughs> or is there? What do you say? Well, um, when Friedman proposed the Big Bang model, 1922. Um, this is what the universe looked like in his first model. This is a space-time diagram. Mm -hmm. So time is going up mm -hmm. this way, and we're showing one curved dimension of space this way. Mm -hmm. And so it looks like a football. It starts off with a big bang at the beginning. And the only thing that's real is the pigskin itself mm -hmm. here. Um, it starts off uh, here, and it makes a circle. It gets bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. The universe expanding. is expanding. The world lines of the galaxies, they, they have paths that go like this, like the seams in the football. W and world line is, is across, uh, over time over as well time, as space. Yes, yeah. so the, the, the world line of a particle here might go from here to here, and there's a big crunch at the end. Mm -hmm. okay. So the universe gets bigger, and then uh, it gets smaller, and there's a big crunch at the end. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be around at the yeah, big no, crunch no. at the end. So this is Friedman's model. Uh, today, we'd understand that the universe is actually going to continue expanding uh, forever, but we, we would also like to start with the Big Bang. But in the standard explanation, as you said, was like, what happened before the Big Bang? Well, there was nothing before the Big Bang. Uh, space and time were created right. at the Big Bang. So it's like asking, what's south of the South Pole? Right. Um, uh, but this answer was not completely satisfactory because the Big Bang explosion that we had here was very uniform. Mm -hmm. If we look at the cosmic microwave background on one side of the sky, on the other side of the sky, it's at the same mm -hmm. temperature. And yet, in the standard Big Bang model, the regions over here and the regions over here haven't had time to talk to each other. So how could they be the same? How could they have come to thermal equilibrium? Yeah. How did they know what temperature to be at? <laughs> so Alan Guth, and, um, he proposed inflation. And this was <laughs> that instead of starting with a Big Bang singularity here at the beginning, you started with a little small universe, maybe 10 to the minus 24 centimeters in circumference. Um, and it was in a very rapid, accelerating expansion called inflation. This allowed a little extra time here, which was enough time to let the different regions of the universe see each other and come to the same temperature. It mm -hmm. explained why the universe was all at the same temperature. Um, also, uh, as this grew here, Quantum, there would be random quantum fluctuations because this is very tiny. And these random quantum fluctuations could give birth to the fluctuations that we see in the microwave background and ultimately to the galaxy clusters mm. that we see in the universe today. So it explains the overall uniformity of the universe and also, interestingly, in detail, the fluctuations that allow us to be here and allow structure to form in the universe. So. The theory of inflation was very good in explaining uh, uh, how the universe got started. In this accelerated expansion, that showed why the Big Bang explosion took place. The, there's a very high energy density quantum vacuum state here that has a very high negative pressure. And the negative gravitational effect of this negative pressure causes the universe to have an accelerated expansion. The space itself. The space itself. So there's a repulsion. So, mm -hmm. uh, so the different parts of the universe are fleeing from each other. And this allows the universe to grow very large. It explains why the universe is so flat as we see it. Um, and uh, so inflation explains a lot of things. Um, but then the question was, well, um, so where did this thing come <laughs> right, from? Right. Still haven't answered that. <laughs> still haven't answered that. Um, uh, Linde said, well, inflation predicts that quantum fluctuations can cause uh, universes to be born from other universes. Mm -hmm. So a quantum fluctuation can occur here, and another inflating horn can occur here. And these will inflate forever, and they just get larger and larger. So this can grow branches, like branches coming mm. off a tree. And each branch grows up to be as big as the trunk itself and sprouts branches of its own. So it makes an infinite fractal tree mm. of universes. Mm. So we have a, inflation predicts a multiverse 
many universes. Um, and this would go on forever. Once inflation gets started, it's, it's hard to stop. Um, so how could you get a universe? Well, it could be born from another previous universe. Still doesn't explain the first one. <laughs> Still, where did the trunk come from? <laughs> so Li Jing Li and I proposed a theory where uh, this happened. Here's a, and here's a glass model. I had a glass blower from New Jersey make this for me. Um, this is a universe, an inflating universe, mm -hmm. and time is going up this way. Mm -hmm. It's getting larger and larger at time. And then it's given birth to another, to another universe off here. And so this is, and you can imagine these missing each other in some high dimensional <laughs> space. Right. Uh, the only thing that's real here is the glass itself. This mm -hmm. is curved surface showing you what the space time is really like. So here's the universe being born off of this one, a branch coming off this. And many off of this. And then yeah. more will come off this ad infinitum. And then here's another, here's another, this one is formed off of this yeah, branch, yeah, and yeah. this is another branch right. coming off. And so what Li Jingli and I said was, well, suppose one of the branches just circled back in time and grew up to be the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> now that sounds easy to say, but it, it sounds like backward causation. Well, this is one of the things that's possible in general relativity oh, in oh, curved no. space-time. So in my world, that's not possible. <laughs> well, there are solutions to okay. Einstein's equations that allow time travel to the past. Okay. Gerdel discovered one, and um, uh, Kip Thorne discovered one. His colleagues discovered wormholes, mm -hmm. and I discovered one on cosmic moving yeah. cosmic strings. Um, and this is just a particular geometry in curved spacetime. And we know that Einstein's field equations give us peculiar geometries. There's the black yeah. hole solution. Sure. That's a hotel where you check in, <laughs> but you don't check out. So uh, this is just another peculiar geometry that it looks like you can have in general relativity, and particularly appropriate for addressing this first cause problem. Mm -hmm. So um, this is a time loop here. This is a time loop. And so th this is a trunk, this is a branch growing out of the trunk, just like, mm -hmm, just like mm -hmm. would occur here. But it happens that this branch circles back and makes a little, a little loop here, like the, like the loop in the, in the number six, if you, mm. if you draw it. Now, but it's the same universe, or is this a branch? This is a branch off the trunk coming yes. back to become yes. the original branch. The nice thing about inflation is that if you take a little tiny piece of it, yes. it expands, whole, it gets bigger and bigger, and it, right. it remains at the same density. So right. it a lot, each little piece of that inflating universe looks like the little piece yeah. that you started with. Right, right, right. Suppose uh, one of those little pieces was the piece that you started with. Um, the difficult thing seems to be how to get the universe out of nothing. There is a theory called quantum tunneling. This Vilenkin produced this, and Hawking and Hartle have also supported this. The idea that um, qu uh, quantum tunneling is an unusual thing that it can occur, maybe Something that ha funny happened at the beginning yeah. of the universe, so maybe it was quantum tunneling. But quantum tunneling usually has two ends. There's two ends mm -hmm. to every tunnel. So they start with a point-like universe that knows all about the laws of yeah. physics, um, and then it tunnels and makes an inflating trunk that right, goes right. on. Um, but it's not really quite nothing. It's a point-like universe. Or how does nothing know about the laws of physics? How do you get a universe out of literally nothing? Mm -hmm. Seems that you're relying on something that doesn't exist. <laughs> so, yeah. so um, we said, well, if there's difficulty with making the universe out of nothing, maybe the universe isn't made out of nothing. Maybe it's made out of something. What could it be made out of? It could be made out of itself. How would it do that? Well, you'd need a little time loop. And this allows the universe to be its own mother. <laughs> it's like that science fiction story that uh, Heinlein wrote, that uh, the man went back in the past, and with the benefit of a sex change operation <laughs> as well, he was able to be his own father and mother. <laughs> so he was an orphan, truly. <laughs> but. Um, so, so here's what's interesting about this model. This is, a, this is a time loop. So if you sit here and you go around here, you can come back to where you started. You can visit an event in your own past. Mm -hmm. There's a closed time-like loop here. 
Once you come out here, though, you can't do the time right, travel anymore. Right. You go out in one of these toward the future. Sure. So, so there's what we call a Cauchy horizon here. This, it, it ends the time travel. You can only use the time machine when it's in existence. Can't use it after it's shut down. Uh. So here we have a time machine at the beginning of the universe that shuts down. Um, it, you can go around here and come back and, and come out yeah. here. Once, once you're here, you're in sort of the normal inflation world, yes. the chaotic inflation. I understand yes. that. But in this world, you say at the beginning, but doesn't this then would have to like last be, be forever? Well, you could go around it forever, an infinite number of times. Was this here forever? Well, it only has a finite circumference, and it might be as short as ten to the as five times ten to the minus forty four seconds. Okay, this could be a very tiny time loop in time. Um, it's very much like um, uh, people in the past might have said, "Well, either the Earth is infinite to the east, yeah. or it's finite, and there's an edge to it." Right. Okay, but that's wrong yeah. because yeah, the sorry. universe, the, the Earth is actually curved, and right. so you can go east as far as you want. Right. Eventually, you come back to where you started. Right. So this is a model where the universe has a beginning. It has a beginning, but it has no earliest event. This event here uh, is preceded by this event, which is preceded by this event. So each event, each each little piece of space time has events that preceded it and uh, caused it in the usual way. That sounds internally consistent, but then yes. how are you using the word beginning? What's the beginning of this? Well, the whole loop is really the beginning. Right. The universe starts off with this closed time-like loop. Um, but that doesn't occur at a, at a moment in time. Not at a particular moment. Every, <laughs> right. every In other right. words, if I keep going back here, yep. back in yeah, time, yeah, yeah, yeah. further back, further back, eventually you I'll find myself in the, the loop. loop and you just right. keep going around, as right. you'd say, forever. Right. Um, but it's actually, you keep revisiting the same event. So right. it's really not right. infinite in right. the past, right. just right. like the Earth isn't infinite right. to right. the east. Right. Now, uh, the nice thing about this model, which we um, did not build into the model, but it was a natural consequence of the model. One of the one of the big mysteries we have in the universe is why do we have the normal arrow of time? What do I mean by that? If I shake a charge here, electromagnetic waves go out at the speed of light. They reach Alpha Centauri, which is four light years away. They reach that four years later. So these are photons going toward the future. But there's a time reversed version of this solution where if I shook a charge here, photons would come from the past just to meet it. These are like photons going toward the past. Mm -hmm. In other words, a time-reversed movie of what I just said, the photons would go toward the past. And that's allowed by Maxwell's equations. Maxwell's mm -hmm. equations are time-symmetric. Mm -hmm. So the laws of electrodynamics, they're time-symmetric. So there'd be no reason from the laws of physics to have this fact that we always see photons going toward the future and we don't see them going toward the past. So why is that? Well, it must have something to do with the initial conditions of the universe. But, but what exactly? So in this model, it's very interesting what happens. Um, if I make a photon here and it goes out toward the future, it just goes out this, this funnel, on out the funnel expands forever, no problem. But if I had one that went toward the past, it would come toward the past, toward the past. It would eventually find itself back in this loop. time loop. It would loop an infinite number of times. And here the universe is contracting. So it's getting more and more blue shifted, this photon, mm -hmm. getting more and more energy as it circles each time. Mm -hmm. It makes an infinite amount of energy. So it, it causes a singularity. It causes <laughs> this to blow up. It's like killing your grandmother. <laughs> and so... You, the only self-consistent solution where this has the geometry that you thought, that you've built mm -hmm. into it, uh, the only not killing your grandmother solution is if there are no photons allowed to go to the past, only we have photons going toward the future. So time travel solutions have to be self-consistent. If you have the simple one world theory of the world, then um, you might have had tea with your grandmother in the past, but you didn't kill her as a young girl because you were later born. It has to be self-consistent. So the only self-consistent solution here is one where you have no photons going to the past, only to the future.